Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Lowe from Physiopedia and this is week two of managing our course Managing Children with Cerebral Palsy. So I'm delighted to be chatting today to Yvonne Frizzle. Yvonne's one of our facilitators and has been working mainly on week two but also um, contributing to a lot of the rest of the course as well. So last week we learnt all about, we revised or learnt all about cerebral palsy, understanding cerebral palsy. We got our baseline knowledge, we talked about the multidisciplinary team um, and a few other things just to get that, just that base of knowledge before we move into more practical topics, more um, pertinent topics. And so in week two, we are moving on to evaluation. So we're just, we're gonna cover a little bit about child development, um, typical and atypical child development and moving on into evaluation. But what I'm gonna do is hand over to Yvonne to talk to us a little bit about evaluation um, because if Yvonne has more, ex way more experience than me, it's not my place to talk about this. So we'll have a little chat with Yvonne. So Yvonne, maybe you could just, Introduce yourself to everyone and let everyone know a little bit about your experience with children with cerebral palsy. Okay, hello, I'm Yvonne Fazel and I'm working in Peshawar in Pakistan and have been for the last 11 years, but really associated with Pakistan for about 30 years. And I'm working in, in community work with children and I have also brought up a, a young boy who's now 34 who also has cerebral palsy. So I've got, you know, years and years of, of being involved in cerebral palsy. And our clinic is free, so we see hundreds of children uh, every, every month and it's very busy. So I've got seen quite a lot of children. That's amazing. That's really amazing. So um, I'm just going to ask you, first of all, a little bit about, um, so it's important that we understand sort of, or that we cover typical and atypical child development in this course. What are the most important things that people need to know? Because they don't, we don't need to cover it in huge detail, I imagine. But what are the most important things in those two topics this week that people should try and take away from this week? Okay, I, I think that it, the biggest thing that everybody should do is just observe. And observe children that you know around you, just to see babies. Um, what do they do? How do they do it? What m motivates them to do it? I think motivation is how child develops. You know, they, they reach out for things, they unbalance themselves and regain their balance. And this is something with atypical development, children find hard to do. So you've really got to understand how, how is normally, how normally do we learn to move? How normally do we learn to stand up? And how can we help children who are having problems with that overcome those problems and do it? So the biggest thing is, you know, look, learn, be aware of what children do. And I guess, and do we need to have a deep understanding of sort of typical development or is it, you know, and atypical oh, development? I, I think that I think that the longer you look at children and see how they do it and see what they do and the deeper you understand that will help you then when you see a child and they can't do something, you've got all that background knowledge of saying, well, I've seen a child that has to learn how to rotate before they can do that. They have to learn to let go with one hand before they can take that step. They have to be able to use their hands to get up. We don't have children who, who can't use their hands. They're always delayed if they can't bring their hands into it. So you look at somebody says, why isn't my child walking? Well, they can't reach out to stabilize themselves to do it. So yes, I think normal and, and what goes wrong is really essential to know. I don't think you can really do this job without knowing what normal children can do. And that's not only physically, but that's also emotionally what makes them do it. Uh, and what stimulation do they need to do it? Good, good. Well, I'm glad that we're covering those topics then. And, and then I guess with that knowledge, that takes us into evaluation, doesn't it? Um, which we'll also be covering this week. So, so talk to us a little bit about evaluation. What's important and, you know, what do people need to take away with respect to evaluation this week? Well, uh, I, I think that if you're looking at what your child is doing before you put your hands on them, so how does the mother carry this child in or granddad or whoever brings the child? How do they carry that child in? Is that helping that child be able to adapt to movement or is it just reinforcing what's happening with them when they're tight or when they have spasticity? So you really from the very beginning are looking and starting to learn for yourself what's happening. And then before you do anything, allow the child to show you what they can do. So and before you decide, oh, this child should be doing this, let them see, let 
just watch what they can do and then try then to see what's happening. Many people also, when they put their hands on, are not saying to the child, oh, let's have a look, see what you could do. It's talking to the child. It's helping them to know that you're not some doctor who's going to hurt them, but you're somebody they can play with. So your evaluation has got to follow on a line of bringing the child on with you. Having said that, as physiotherapists, which I am, you also need to know, you know, is it increase in tone that's making this go wrong or do they not have the ability to balance so you'll go back to all your basic understanding of what you need so I mean that's how we start anyway and so that's sort of thinking about um kind of your first meeting with a child but the evaluation goes on forever doesn't it yes yes it does and you're you're seeing how how your handling affects the child. So it, it, and also how does that translate into what happens at home? What does mum say is the problem? You know, what are, what are the issues that they have? And I say mum, but I mean generally carer because it's usually, you know, gran and granddad and mum and dad and sisters and brothers. It's everybody. Unlike adults, you're looking at this child within the context of the whole family. And if you don't do that, you're gonna miss out how you can influence what happens to that child. So the evaluation, it's not specifically just the child. It has to be what's happening to them. What is their environment like? What are the limitations of their environment? Um, and so evaluation will happen on your first visit and then on your second visit and then on your third, whether you're visiting them or they're visiting you. It is an ongoing, and, and you'll be seeing these children on and off, possibly for years. I've seen children for years. And you, you're, you're building up a picture of what they need to do um, and I suppose that's what's so different from this physiotherapy uh, to to the acute and to the sports injuries and to everything else it is something you don't let go of you know you, you build on it day at each time you see a child yeah and it's interesting isn't it so it's an ongoing process forever for that child um, and also it's different in the way that it's so inclusive of the caregivers, isn't it? With the, you know, you're not just evaluating the child, you're evaluating the caregivers and how they um, interact with the child as well, which I think is slightly different to other, like you mentioned, sports injuries or orthopedics and things like that, where you are just dealing with your patient, for want of a better word, or your service user, um, which is really interesting. So it's an, another interesting way to look at evaluation. And I, so I'm just wondering, is there any as you work with a child, as they grow older through their lifespan, does evaluation change at all from those early days through to later stages or when they're, you know, when they're a teenager or an adolescent? Well, I, I would say that with age, in my experience, that then it becomes more and more about what the child, come teenager, come young adult wants. I mean, what do they really need out of life? So you have a child and they have hemiplegia. So you might decide, oh, well, I'm really going to get them, you know, working with that. And then as they get to teenager, they're saying, well, I look different. I don't look the same as ever. I want to look more normal. I want to. So you're going to find ways in which to help them do that. So, yes, it, de it becomes more about the older they get, it becomes more about what does that person want for themselves? Because this is not this is not a, a sickness. This is not an illness. This is a condition which is just depending on the degree. It's just what in interferes with the way they can access everything they want to in their life. Mm -hmm. Really yeah. interesting. Yeah, no, really interesting. And I think it's a good point to bring up about how that can evolve from you um, evaluating the caregivers and then and then it being more important to take into account that, that older person's needs as they're able to express them, I suppose. Yes, and I think that you won't you won't be able to avoid this because the person that you get involved with, less and less do teenagers want to be interfered with. Less and less do they want you to have hands on and do your physio. They want more to for you to solve problems. And and I think there's really some really good resources available to us to see how that can improve their self esteem and how you can change and evaluate. What do they need at every stage? And I think it, it definitely is an ongoing process all through their life. I've got, you know, the 34-year-old that I've brought up, we're still looking, what does he want to do? And for him, he wants to be active. He wants to be, and he's quite severely disabled. So he wants the thrills and the adrenaline of doing things that are fast and speedy. 
and you know you've got to to balance that as well yeah nice really nice I think that's a really nice um little chat about evaluation I think that's a really good place to um, take it from there. So there's lots to cover this week. Again, we advise everyone to look at all the required elements that we've put into the course, the additional resources, there are lots of them. If you try and do them all, it will take you way more than four, or six, four to six hours that we recommend. So, you know, the additional resources, the resources will always be available to you to come back for you, for you, to you, to come back late, to later. Um, so just make sure you get the required elements done and, and just take try and take away some of those messages from Yvonne this week um, to take forward into the following week. So so Yvonne is going to be, Yvonne's one of our facilitators, she'll be around in the discussion forum so you might recognise her name and she'll be answering some of your questions. So thanks very much Yvonne for sharing that with us today. Just before we go, is, have you any final messages that you want to share with the participants on this course? Yeah, I've told my staff, I've got 10 staff who are who have registered for this, and I've told them, enjoy it, get as much as you can, learn, but also give. Because if you've got something that's worked, that's something that's happened, give as well as, as take from it. Because this is a fantastic opportunity to, to really involve so many people. So give as well as taking. And I think that's what I've told my staff, and enjoy it. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, and we will see you this week in the discussion forums. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.